All right, y'all, how's it going? My name's Hunter, and I'm going to be going over one of the National Re Registry Skills Tests, uh, BVM ventilation of an apneic adult patient. Uh, I did a little bit of research on this. I found a few videos. Um, I'm not going to be doing any personal demonstration. I don't have any equipment or anything, but I thought it'd be uh, helpful if I walked through it. And I know a lot of people find this one to be more difficult. Um, I find it a little bit more difficult than some of the other ones because this one uh, has a lot of content. I'm um, taking my skills test tomorrow. Um, this is one of them that we're doing. I'm currently at Lynn College in Texas. But this is the sheet. If you have not seen it yet or if you're confused on it, uh, this is the sheet and it pretty much goes through it exactly like it says. And that's how the skill is going to be. Um, anyway, but this is how it goes. Um, you're going to start off. BSI seems safe. Obviously, that's the first thing you always do in all these skills. If you don't do that, you will fail. I promise you. Um, I've seen tons of people fail it this semester already because of that. Uh, then, obviously, you're going to check the responsiveness. After checking the responsiveness, you're going to check breathing. And then, of course, after that, you're going to go ahead and get your additional EMS assistance and all that, uh, ALS. Um, then you're going to check your pulse for five seconds, no more than 10. At that point, the instructor is going to inform you that you have a weak palpated pulse, um, or I'm sorry, carotid pulse at a rate of 60. Uh, you're going to open the airway. You're going to assess the airway. And at that point, the instructor is going to tell you that there is um, secretions, vomits, stuff like that in the airway. At this point, what you're going to do is you're going to prepare your rigid suction catheter, which is what you're going to be using to suction the patient. Um, make sure when you do this that you do not suction as you're going in. So what you're going to do is, is you're going to prepare it, um, manually, you know, put it all together. It's pretty simple and, and straightforward. You shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, I've never seen anyone have a problem with that part in my lab. Um, but then you're going to hold, there's a part on the actual catheter on the uh, suctioner. You're going to hold that down and you're going to go in. And as soon as you get to the throat or right here at the base, um, you're going to release it and then um, take it out and let it suction out. After that, you're going to hold it again and just do it, you know, four or five times, probably good. Uh, don't don't really do it too much because they could tell you possibly if you do it too much. I personally probably do it three times and I'll be done. At that point, you're going to open the airway. Once again, you're going to insert the OPA, which you can use the, the two-finger trick where you put, the, your, put your fingers in the mouth and you open it up and insert the OPA, or you could do it another way, which a lot of people have been using, where you grab the tongue with your, with your thumb, you open it, and then you stick the OPA in from a sideways point, and then you twist it in. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, at that point, your instructor will tell you that there's no gag, that, that, no gag reflex is present, and the patient then accepts the airway at home. So pretty much what that's saying is that there's no gag reflex, and you're, you can continue. Uh, at this point, go ahead and bag your patient. Um, no oxygen. You can use oxygen, but like it says, you need to at least get oxygen to this patient from the start of it to this point. It needs to be 30 seconds. So me personally, I'm going to just go ahead and bag them for 30 seconds without oxygen. Um, after 30 seconds, then you're going to put the oxygen at a flow rate of 15 liters per minute. Bag them again for another 30 seconds, and then that's it. Um, you're your uh, assessor will probably say, uh, you know, how how could you indicate that your patient is getting proper ventilation? Well, there's real three easy things you can say. Either one of them work. Um, proper chest rise and fall is one indication. Uh, another one would be if you check the uh, pulse ox, and the pulse ox was at at least 97%. You know, 90s is, it kind of fluctuates with some people. Some people say, okay, if it's in the 90s, that's good, but it's really supposed to be about 97%. Higher, so um, the pulse ox is at about let's say 95, 96. You're probably doing, you're getting them oxygen, um, and they're they're actually you know using the oxygen. Um, and then another way that you could say, or another thing that you could say, um, is that their skin color is returning to normal. When someone's not getting oxygen, they're going to be pale or blue, cyanotic. Um, if you're starting to see their color come back, or looking like their you know skin's more of a, a warm, it's not warm, I'm sorry, more of a pinkish color, then you're probably getting them oxygen. Um, 
And other than that, that's pretty much all I have on this one. Um, like I said, it's really not that difficult. It's just a lot of content, and you got to make sure that you know what you're talking about. You know what you're doing. It's real easy to fill these things. All right, I'm Hunter, and appreciate your time.